Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at strong content in writing. Our learning goals for today are to look at what is strong content in writing, how can a writer or reader identify strong content, and how can a writer improve upon content. So let's start out by taking a look at what is content. So content makes up all of your ideas, your information, your research, all of your information that you are communicating to your reader. That's what content is. It has to do with what it is that you have to say. So in an essay, that's going to include the thesis statement, support, and details. In a narrative, it's going to include the story plots, the events. And in a research piece, it's going to include the evidence, examples, quotations, observations, references, all of your research and your statistics. So it's your information. It's what you are trying to communicate to the reader. All right, so how is content used in writing? Um, content makes up what the writing is all about, what it's proving. It pushes the writing to reach its purpose. Whatever that purpose is, it may be to inform, it may be to persuade, it may be to entertain. And all of that information that's included in that particular piece of writing, that's the content. All right, so let's take a look here at how, as a writer or a reader, that you can identify strong content. This list here identifies for you some of the specifics that you're going to be looking at. You're going to look for writing that has a narrow topic, it's very relevant to current events, it's accurate, it's intelligent, it's original, it demonstrates topic insight and anticipates and answers readers' questions, it pulls the reader into the writing, and then it also keeps the reader's attention throughout the writing. It's very engaging for the reader. It makes the reader really care about that topic and gives the reader a full, thorough understanding about the topic by showing with images and strong details. It's going to give depth and breadth of that information to the reader so that the reader walks away with a thorough understanding of that content. So you could look at this list here and you could identify any of those pieces as being strong content. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here we have a piece that's, uh, this one would be strong content. Have you ever cried yourself to sleep? Have you cried so hard that your heart raced, your lungs contracted, and your entire face from your eyelids to your throat swelled uncontrollably? This is what it feels like to cry it out. And this is what a small child suffering in the terrifying dark, lonely corner of a bedroom when her parents have left her to cry it out. So this here is a very short piece, just a couple of sentences, and it communicates this idea here of um, babies crying and uh, what that experience might be like. We've got some examples here. We've got some imagery here that the writer has included to give us a view of um, this writer's thoughts here and give us some strong content. Let's take a look at another example. A zombie turkey. I ran across the most peculiar creature who looks like a cross between a chicken and a porcupine. His feathery body was covered in a layer of brutal looking razor sharp spikes, bristles poised at the ready to scrub off layers of skin in a moment. The Pedomastix africanus is a recently named dinosaur that stood under two feet tall but probably held its own with its fierce fangs for biting and chomping at predators millions of years ago. So here what we have is an informational piece that's expository in nature and it gives the reader a nice thorough description, gives some really good details, gives some great imagery so that the reader can get the idea of a picture of what this creature was like. Now let's take a look at the other ends. Let's take a look at weak content, the presentation of information in a way that doesn't work out very well. So babies need to learn to go to sleep. If they don't, then they are annoying. Babies should sleep a lot to grow, so they need to sleep. My little brother is eight months old, and he cries at night sometimes. So here we have some of this similar information that was included in the cry it out piece, but it's not very thorough. It doesn't give strong details. It wanders off topic just a little bit. It doesn't get in depth before moving the topic forward. And it just doesn't deliver to the reader strong information here, strong information on the content 
and therefore doesn't give a strong presentation. And let's take a look at another example of weak content, something it just, it's just not quite working. Dinosaurs are cool. They killed other dinosaurs to eat them. They ate leaves too. Some dinosaurs were small as chickens. So here we have some general information about dinosaurs, that this person has a viewpoint that they're, they're pretty cool, they're pretty neat, and a little bit in terms of specifics on what a couple of dinosaurs may have done or what their sizes were. But what we don't have here is we don't have this really thorough description. We don't have this really thorough piece that gives us information about the dinosaurs so that as readers we're really engaged in the piece, really interested in moving forward with it. This is an example of weak content. It's just not working very well here. Okay, so strong content is going to be interesting. It's going to be inviting. It's going to be nice and detailed. It's going to have sensory details like sight, touch, smell, sound, and taste. It's going to show both depth and breadth, and it's going to be clear, concise, and correct. And it's going to be kind of extraordinary. It's going to be unusual and unique. It's really going to stand out, something that um, anything can really make it stand out. The tone, uh, the information that's included, the way that it's presented. So it's got something special to it to make it stand out there. These are the kinds of pieces here that you're looking for in strong content, whether that's your own content that you're writing or as you are operating as a reader and you're reading through somebody else's content. So what should students do? So students are expected to use strong content in all of their writing and to support strong content with factual evidence in essays and in research projects. At this point, what you should know and be able to do is to know what strong content in writing is, be able to identify strong content, and to have an understanding on how an, a writer may improve upon content, regardless of what kind of writing that it is. So I hope this information has been useful to you, and good luck with your writing.